Hey data factory fans, today I want to talk to you a little bit about constructing a pipeline that uses some of the built-in data transmission capabilities that you'll find in data factory. So we're going to build a end-to-end -end example that will ingest data using the copy data activity, then prep the data using the new power query activity, it used to be called wrangling data flows, and then finally we'll load the data into slow change dimensions using a data flow. Okay, so to first acquire data. Now, you can always acquire data directly from Power Query and from Dataflow, but be aware that as data transformation and data prep tools within Data Factory, the, currently the uh, connectors available to those two activities are limited. The broad range of almost 100 different connectors that Data Factory offers are all available to the copy data because copy data is data ingest. And then on the transformation side, the number of connectors can be a little bit more limited. So what you can do is if the connector is not available to you directly, let's say in Power Query or in Mapping Data Flows, use a copy data activity to stage the data into a data store, a storage account, or a database that is available to those activities. So in this case, let's acquire some loans data. And I'll tell you what I'll do is I will use as an example for a source. Let's click on new next to source for your copy data. And let's look for the SAP source data. So let's say we want to pull data from SAP ECC. You could select SAP here and then add that as your source in your copy data. And then click on sync on your copy data activity and you will see that you can sync the data into a storage account. In this case, I'm going to put it into this folder that I call folder out. This is going to be my blob store where I'm going to store the data. So I'm going to take the data from SAP, stage it so I can access it now from my Power Query in my data flow later on in the pipeline. So to review, I use the copy data activity. The copy activity is here in the move and transform. You'll see copy data right here. You drag it onto your design surface in your pipeline canvas, and then you uh, point to the source from those 100 different connectors and then your sync which is going to be one of the connectors that the power query and data flow understand you can read from now i'm going to use the power query mashup that i created in an earlier video and i'll put the link to that in the description for this video and this is my loans data prep and i was able to add that to my design service by going over here into factory resources and you, here you'll see the different categories the different artifacts that you have inside of your data factory and in my case, I have this loans data wrangling right here. So I can take that and I can drag it and I can connect it from my copy activity this way. And then give it a name. So in this case, I just have one Power Query activity coming off of my copy data. So after this data is ingested, then this Power Query will run. And actually, before I jump into the, uh, the definition of the data wrangling a little bit, I actually want to go back to the pipeline and just show you that you can name the activity a little bit, you know, something meaningful here so that when you look at the pipeline on the canvas, it kind of makes sense to other folks who are looking at it and other eyes see it, that it will make sense to what it's actually doing. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that for a demonstration, it makes sense to just go ahead and acquire this loans data from your source in this stage. But you may want to get a little bit smarter about that as you operationalize a pipeline in this manner. And we do have pre-built incremental um, patterns that you may wish to apply here and you'll find those um, those sample patterns under templates so if you click new under factory resources and then pipeline from template you can search the template gallery and you can look for incremental and you'll see an incremental example in fact this one is for sap table and then when you select the data sets inside of your inside of your template wizard a uh, pipeline that looks a lot like this will get added to your factory and you can use that pattern in your pipeline. So what that pattern is really doing uh, from that template is it is going to uh, first look up the source data and see what data has changed since the last time that this pipeline ran. And then that way you're only going to uh, use or, or find data that has incrementally changed the last time you ran this pipeline instead of always acquiring all of the data. So for this demo, let's just keep it simple and we'll just acquire data. We've landed into a Blob Store and then we're going to run that Power Query. Now I was going to show you the Power Query. So back in here, you'll see that when you point to the source data, so this Power Query is reading from a source data set that was created from that copy activity sync. So it's passing the data along by serializing it into a storage account. Now, when you add a source to your Power Query, you'll go to settings and add source, and then there is a new button right here. 
these are the current connectors that you can use with Power Query. So you'll want to acquire data into one of these and land it here if you need to do that. Otherwise, if the data already is in a storage account or is in SQL database or Synapse Analytics, then you can just go ahead and directly access the data there. You don't need to stage it first with a copy activity. So I'm not going to go through the details of creating this mashup i have a separate video for that uh, in the description uh link is in the description but i will tell you that what i do is i acquire the data from the source then i filter some rows change some columns and uppercase uh, text column all right so essentially that is prepping my data for my next stage in my pipeline which is going to be to uh, generate some slow change dimensions and load that into uh, synapse uh, sql pools into azure sql database now in here, I do want to state that the way that you then serialize the results of your mashup. So the mashup here within my data exploration uh, Power Query tool is all fine and good, but I want to actually execute this against large amounts of data coming in. So DataFactor will do that for you, and then you need to specify in the settings where you want the data to go. So in this case, I'm going to land the result of my Power Query activity into natural sql database table and then i'll read from this table in my next stage which is going to be my data flow so back in the pipeline that's what happens here and then my data flow is going to run a sql loader but let's make this a little bit more complex let's use an actual slow change in dimension for this so i can select that here now if you'd like to apply slow change dimension patterns to your pipelines um, we have patterns and templates for that as well so back let me go over here to the factory resources under pipeline from template again in the template gallery just search for slow change in dimension and you'll see the generic pattern here and a, an example pattern here for scd type twos you can click on here then add this to your pipeline and uh, let me actually show you that so if you look at the uh, data flow example for that it'll walk you through how to take the existing data so you can take the data that was um, serialized into a table from the previous activity, the Power Query activity, and then you can use that as a dimension table in a lookup against new data coming in. That would be your uh, your change data that you can then look to see if those dimensions already exist in your uh, database dimension table, and you can decide what to do with those as you go throughout the process of your a data flow in this case we are leading the data then in this one this example goes into a sql azure sql database table okay so once you're done with that you can click on the debug button you can actually execute this against a debug cluster because that will then use the debug session with a databricks cluster that will execute your power query and your data flow at scale using the same infrastructure that will execute on spark so now your power query and your data flow design this design here and this design here essentially your data prep and your data flow logic could all use the Azure integration runtimes to execute at scale. The Azure integration runtimes are defined here in the activity settings. So I'm using the exact same one, integration runtime one. Uh, let me just minimize these and show you right there. Now the definition for the integration runtimes are here under the management tab. And what's important about this is I can in here specify the amounts of cores are essentially the compute size I want to apply to my pipeline activity. So I'm giving this one 64 cores of worker nodes to be able to process, uh, prep, and transform that data. And then I have a TTL set of four hours. You don't need four hours for a time to live. I just set that because I want to use this all day long. But 10 minutes would actually be sufficient here because this way, as soon as that Power Query is done executing on that database cluster, that same infrastructure can be reused in the next data flow activity. So it'll, it'll um, start up much faster. Now, because I'm using my a GitHub for my changes here for my source control, I have to then publish this before I execute this from my from a uh, trigger. I can debug from here without needing to publish, but you'll want to publish before you actually execute a trigger. So you can set triggers that'll let you do things like schedule this on a, a clock or uh, an event trigger or a window of time, right? When you do, when you execute those, then you'll actually monitor this activity from the monitor view. The monitor view in Data Factory is over here in the monitor. And you can see that I have these data flows that I, or these uh, pipelines that I've run over time. And let's take a look at the last one that I ran for that exact um, pipeline that we're looking at here. So we had the copy data activity that acquired the data, the data wrangling then ran in Power Query, and the data flow ran.
And once you see when you click on the eyeglasses, you can see the details of that execution. This one actually ran against the SQL load data flow, not the slow change in dimension data flow, but you can see that the cluster startup was very fast because it actually used the same integration runtime with the time to live that was warmed up by the Power Query activity. The Power Query activity to run at scale, you see that you get the same kind of execution plan from it, but it designed this and, and derived this for you automatically by taking the M query and translating that into Dataflow script. And the startup time was four minutes because it had to start up cold. All right, so that's an example of how you'd build a pipeline that uses data wrangling and data flows together, along with the data acquisition for the connectors that are not natively available to you in those two activities. All right, thanks for watching.